Gnome 46 is here and it comes with a bunch of improvements, not to the general Gnome desktop experience, but more to the applications it brings. And it's also the first version of many that brings the results of the huge 1 million euro grant that Gnome got last year. So today we'll take a look at everything you'll get once Gnome 46 hits your distro, whether it's better file management, better notifications, improved settings, general changes to the desktops, and a bunch of changes to the apps. And we'll also take a look at our sponsor. This video is sponsored by Squarespace, and chances are you all know what Squarespace is, but if you don't, just know that they're your all-in-one solution to create and run your own website. Squarespace has all the tools you need to start your website, improve it, even without knowing anything about code. They have pre-made layouts that you can customize heavily in terms of the colors, of block placement, just by drag and drop, it's really easy to use. You can create all your pages, but you also have plenty of modules, like anything you need to run a store, complete with online payment. You have a members only area, you have a logo creator, you can even buy your own domain name that you will need to have a serious website straight from Squarespace. So they are your all-in-one platform to let you create and run that website. So to get started with Squarespace, just click the link in the description or head over to squarespace.com slash the Linux experiment and you'll get 10% off your first website. So let's begin with the improvements to the desktop shell itself. The main thing you will enjoy here is some redesigned notifications. These will now show a header to let you know which app spawned that notification. And they will include a little symbolic icon as well to be more easily identifiable. On top of that, notifications that are pretty long or that have action buttons can also be expanded or collapsed, whether they're on top of the screen or in the date and time pop-up. Meaning you can now either collapse what you don't want to interact with right now, or you can make sure you see everything there is to see immediately. And these were necessary changes. Notifications in GNOME were pretty much useless or sometimes even downright annoying. Now what this all leads up to is notification grouping, which is not going to come for GNOME 46, but probably for GNOME 47. On top of that, notifications telling you that a USB device can be safely removed will now automatically be dismissed after you remove that drive, instead of being there for hours, even though the device had been unplugged a while back. There are plenty of other smaller changes though. The first one is experimental support for variable refresh rate. It is turned off by default and you will have to use deconf to turn it on. Once you do that, you will get a switch for that feature in the display settings, provided your display supports it, with a preferred refresh rate list, letting you set the one you want as the default. That's not stable yet, but it's still really cool to have that option. And if you're wondering why variable refresh rate is important, it is mostly for playing video games on your PC. It basically tells the monitor to sync its refresh rate to the frame rate of the game you're playing. So the monitor doesn't have to play catch up. You eliminate screen tearing, most latency and some performance problems. Another change is in how fonts are rendered using fractional scaling. They are now less blurry and they will look more consistent. Two instances of the same character will now look the same, when previously they would either look bigger or smaller or even not properly aligned. This is because fonts are now rendered directly at the scale you picked, for example 125%. Instead of being scaled to 200%, then scaled back down to the desired scaling factor. Fractional scaling is still off by default, though you will have to enable it in deconf. Now, depending on your distro, fractional scaling might be enabled right off the bat and you probably will not have to enable it yourself. Other smaller changes include the ability to press Ctrl plus Super and a number to launch the associated app from your dock. Ctrl plus Super plus one starts the first app in the dock, for example. You also get remote login using RDP, so you could use another computer that has access to an RDP client and log into your GNOME computer if no one is currently logged into it. So your desktop experience will be pretty much the same as in GNOME 45. These are nice little touches, but they're just the first drafts of what will come in GNOME 47 or 48. Variable refresh rate and better fractional scaling, they are both really good to have, improved notifications as well, but we'll really see them come into their own in the next release. 
Now fortunately there are a lot of other changes in GNOME 46. The file manager Nautilus got way better in this release. First you can now click the path bar to edit the location manually instead of having to press Ctrl plus L to do so. Yeah, I know, this is all everyone ever wanted. We could probably end the video here, but we won't. Next is search. It now performs much faster than it used to. And the search button now does a global search directly. No need to click the global search button anymore. If you only want to search in the current directory, you have a dedicated search current folder button right next to the path bar. Global search will also search in all the locations that you picked in the search page of the main GNOME settings, including custom locations or custom drives. When transferring files, the progress bar has been moved to the bottom of the sidebar instead of being in a little circle next to the toolbar buttons. As before, clicking on that area will show you more information like the time remaining or the transfer speeds. Changing a folder icon is now much easier as well. You can just open the properties to the right click menu of that folder and you have a little edit icon to set the icon to whatever you want. The settings for Nautilus also gained a search field to find what you're looking for. Although since there are 12 things you can tweak overall, I am not sure it was absolutely necessary. But you do get a new setting to change how date and time formats are displayed for files either as human readable dates or more numeric ones. Now just the ability to manually type the location you want to get to is a huge time saver. Why wasn't it here since the beginning of GNOME 3? Who knows, but now it's there. Now the settings have changed as well because settings always need to change in every update to every desktop. First, there's a new system page. It groups the region and language, date and time, users, remote desktops, secure shell, and about pages, plus a link to the software updates. Default apps have been merged into the main apps settings page as a subcategory, which now also includes the default actions you can configure when you insert a CD, DVD, music player, camera, or something else. The mouse and touchpad settings now let you configure how you trigger the right click, either through a button or touchpad area, or with a two finger click. And there's a new mouse test page to make sure these settings work for you. You can also turn off the touchpad when typing or disable that setting if you don't like it. The online accounts page also received some love, notably for its backend. It now uses your default web browser for authentication into accounts instead of the basic integrated web view, meaning that first you can now see the full URL, which is safer and more reassuring. You can use your saved passwords in your password manager in your browser, you can use USB authentication methods as well, and it's one less moving part to maintain for GNOME developers. You can also add a web dev account to get access to contacts, calendars, and files in all the GNOME apps that integrate with these online accounts. And you can add a Microsoft personal account as well, which will give you access to your OneDrive storage straight from Nautilus. Accessibility-wise, you can now add the on or off shapes for toggles to better understand if something is on or off. And you can display crosshair lines when zooming in on the desktop to better see where your pointer is when moving it. The online accounts change will definitely make it way easier for people to log in to stuff that requires more advanced authentication or even two-factor authentication, which is nice. And having reordered settings is probably good as well, I guess. Now, in terms of the default GNOME apps, there are plenty of changes as well. GNOME Software, the App Store, now shows the verified badges on Flathub applications that have them, meaning you now know if an app has been published by their original developers or if it's a third-party repackaging effort. Most pages were also ported to the latest Libadvita controls. GNOME Calendar gained performance improvements, which I didn't really know it needed, and it now displays the current month a lot more visibly in the month view, so you always know where you are. The little calendar that's in the sidebar also received some improvements, now using the same week numbers as the ones in GNOME Shell. Calendar will also use the settings portal to set the current date. The image viewer, Loop, now has a keyboard shortcut to permanently delete an image. It's Shift plus Delete. When using the arrow keys to navigate between images, there will no longer be an animation. This animation will only trigger now when using the in-app navigation buttons, and I don't really know why that change was made. 
Epiphany, the web browser, now automatically retrieves app names and icons from websites using their progressive web apps manifest, if they have one. So everything will be already nice and tidy when you create a web app from the browser. It also fixes some issues with how it syncs with your Firefox account, and it gains support for smart card authentication as well, meaning you can authenticate using USB devices while using Epiphany. Gnome Maps moved their controls to the bottom of the application and gained improvements to the vector map layer, although this one is still experimental for now. It also improved how favorite places work with a default empty state that explains what favorites are. Finally, Gnome Music has been ported to use the latest Libadvita widget, but it also lost a bunch of things along the way. It no longer has support for last.fm scrobbling and it lost its song list view. It gained a preferences dialog, which doesn't contain much, but it still lets you set the repeat mode, enable replay gain, or inhibiting suspend when playing music. Finally, the GNOME system monitor was entirely ported to GTK4, finally completing the transition. And the Orca screen reader also received some improvements, especially gaining support for the new Spiel speech synthesis API. So GNOME 46 feels like a transition release. You can notice that a lot of work has been put into it, but also it just looks like the first bricks for what is to come in the next versions of GNOME. Things you can look forward to in the future include better notifications with a new portal that apps can tap into with the ability to play sound or vibrate on mobile devices, with permanent notification support, standardized layouts and actions, grouping and rich content like images and progress bars. You can look forward to better accessibility as well, with a new framework that will make these features much more reliable across apps and toolkits. Variable refresh rate as a stable setting will also come, and there's work planned on making background apps actionable with a little menu to actually interact with these background apps, thus turning this section into a full system tray replacement. Home directory encryption is also on the way with system D home D. Better fractional scaling, including for X Wayland, is also being worked on. And all of that was made possible by the 1 million euro grant that GNOME got last year. And some first parts of these features are landing in GNOME 46, but the real big changes will be in GNOME 47 or GNOME 48. So GNOME 46 had the unenviable task of starting with these features, but also of competing with Plasma 6 in terms of changes and features. And of course, Plasma 6 has a lot more to talk about because it received a full year of work compared to six months for GNOME 46. But in the end, they're both quite similar in terms of what they offer. They do not revolutionize your desktop experience. They're just laying better foundations for what's to come in the future. And honestly, I'm okay with that. If these are just the first indications of what's to come to GNOME in the future, then I'm very excited to see what 47 and 48 will bring with all this new cool stuff. Now, GNOME 46 will be available widely on Ubuntu 24.04 and Fedora 40, and I'm pretty sure a bunch of rolling releases will also get it relatively soon. Everything I recorded and showed here was recorded using GNOME OS on real hardware, uh, but obviously it's not something that you should use as a daily driver, even if you really, really want GNOME 46. But if you really, really want a new computer to run Linux on, then there's our sponsor, Tuxedo Computers. They're based in Germany, but they ship to most countries in the world, and they make laptops, desktops, and NUCs that ship with Linux pre-installed. The main reason why you would want that compared to a manufacturer that only supports Windows is that you don't really have to cross your fingers and hope that your hardware will be supported with your favorite distro. When you buy from Tuxedo, you know it works because they actually submit patches upstream to the Linux kernel and various drivers to fix the issues they encounter during testing. And if these patches are not accepted just yet, they have repos that lets you install them on various other distributions than the one that they pre-install with. And they have a nice big range that should fit every need and every price point, whether you need a small laptop for office work, all the way up to a giant workstation for video editing, 3D rendering, or just a big fat gaming PC. You can have everything. All of them are very customizable, especially on the laptop side, where you can have your own logo engraved on the lid, your own custom keyboard layout, and you can open, repair, and upgrade all the laptops. 
So if you need a new computer and you want to run Linux on it and you want to support a company that actually supports Linux, well, click the link in the description below and get yourself something from Tuxedo. They're really good. So thanks everyone for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't hesitate to like, to subscribe, to turn on notifications or to write a comment. And if you really enjoy the channel, there are plenty of links in the description of the video as well to do just that. Patreon members and YouTube members at any tier will actually gain access to a daily Linux and open source news show from Monday to Friday. So thanks for watching and I guess you'll see me in the next one. Bye!